Well, this is Hallelujah, and I'm here to talk about and explain the reason why our Father in Heaven, Yahu Yahuwah, hated Esau. And I think it's a very important concept in order to understand another aspect of sin and how our Heavenly Father views it. So we're going to go over a few statements that may conflict with the regular Christian narrative of how the Most High doesn't hate anyone, starting with Malachi 1-2. I have loved you, says Yahuwah, but you said, how have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, declares Yahuwah, yet I have loved Jacob, but I have hated Esau. Hate is a very strong word, and we're going to want to seek confirmation in the New Testament to see if it holds up, <laughs> and obviously it still does, since there's very few inconsistencies in either the Old or New Covenant. Here it says in Romans 9.13, Just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Further proof as to the stability of character of the Most High. Now we're going to view and see what Esau has done wrong. And then I'm going to recontextualize it as I see it in order to hopefully display a new perspective you might not have thought of. So after Esau is tired and weary, he comes home and tells Jacob, Behold, I am about to die. So what use is then the birthright to me? After Jacob asks for him to sell his birthright. He tells him to first swear to me, and he does so, and then the birthright is completely sold to Jacob over lentils. In uh, the apocryphal book of Jubilees, it mentions how the lentils were read, another nod to Esau's name, and a further hint that the Most High <laughs> pro provided as to the way fate works in the universe as he delineates and controls each and every one of our lives, whether you're with him or against him. So let's go to <laughs> Genesis 27, and here we're going to see... Where Esau holds a grudge against Jacob. So Esau bore a grudge against Jacob, Gen Genesis 27-41, because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. That classic story. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill Jacob. <laughs> We're going to later see in Hebrews just how intense that feeling was and how without the intervention of the most high it very well could have been a repeated episode of Cain and Abel so let's show how Esau fulfilled his uh, description in Hebrews 12 so Genesis 26 34 when Esau was 40 years old, he, was mar he married Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Besmath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. And they brought grief to Isaac and Rebekah. Now this, in uh, Genesis, is not too in-depth and detailed, but Hebrews sheds light as to what this relationship between his two wives did to Isaac and Rebekah. Rebekah. So we can just see here, oh wait, Matthew 4, mm -hmm. I'm trying to find it, okay, okay, here it is, <laughs> mm. for you know that Wait, let me start at Hebrews twelve fifteen. See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up, causes trouble, and that it may not, and by it many be defiled, that there be no immoral or godless person like Esau, who sold his own birthright for a single meal. 
For you know that afterwards, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it with tears. Now we're going to have to dissect this portion, because this is the most important scripture dealing with Esau. So we're going to want to see what he means by immoral. We see it has to do with the Greek word for pornos, which is sexual immorality, which is related to the Genesis Genesis. 26 passage as to why Isaac and Rebecca were distressed then we have godless where he thought it was okay to do things his way and that he could get away with it and none of his actions really matter which is further supported by uh, verse 17 where even though he wanted to repent he couldn't so there are some actions where you truly have to make the most out of the time you have. Otherwise, there's certain times in our lives where you can't turn back even if you want to. Though he sought it with tears. This is reminiscing of the gnashing and weeping that is described with uh, Yeshua's visions and testimonies of uh, hell and Sheol. Now I want to talk about how I want to describe more about the sellout aspect of Esau and the devil was trying to coax it out of the Messiah in order to turn Yeshua to onto the kingdom of kingdom of darkness. So let's see. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like this when you view this verse in a new context is A pretty nice callback. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, If you are the son of the Most High, command that these stones become bread. This is reminiscent of uh, Esau selling his birthright for the red lentils. And he replied, as Esau should have, if he were a true man of the Most High, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Most High. And then we have another instance where Yeshua could have sold out for power, for immediate gratification, rather than following the painful, long, and distressing route that our Heavenly Father planned for him, but was so much more fulfilling and righteous than the devil could have ever schemed up with. So here we see, again, the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Another form of godlessness, obviously worshiping anything or anyone except for the Most High Elohim. Then Yeshua said to him, go, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Yahuwah, your Elohim, and serve him only. And the devil left him, and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. This lesson should be uh, in the back of your mind in order to realize just how amazing the gift of repentance is. For it's a limited time offer, to put it that way. And I pray that you can make the most of it, and that you can develop a relationship with your creator and that you may be reconciled to him and his son by familiarizing yourself with his personality and coming to terms with your own sinful nature and by decreasing so that he may increase in your life in order to be fulfilled as the spiritual being you are without conforming to this evil desolate world so i pray that all of you guys listening no matter how few or how many people listen that they may be emboldened with this message and uh encouraged to repent to their creator and uh in yahushua's name i pray i hope you all find this message well in your spirit and uh keep studying the word in yahushua's name we pray amen